Hello, uh, my name is Jean-Paul Giancarlo, and I'm an Autodesk m and &E Technical Specialist for South Europe. Uh, in this YouTube mini-series, I'm going to be showing you guys how to animate an object with expressions. So for this example, I'm going to be doing your typical bouncing ball. As you can see there, it's just a bouncing ball, um, which just looks a, bit, a little bit nice, you know, very nice, actually. Um, so how are we going to do this? Also, I need to select, I'm going to select my sphere now. I'm going to go to my expression editor. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit nicer what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. And what I did basically is add a bunch of expressions, but I'm, I'm basically going to go one by one so I can show you how this is done and what all this stuff means and why these numbers are here and there, you know. They're not arbitrary, they mean something. So let's start. So I'm gonna delete this, edit. I'm gonna zero out here me attribute editor all the all the attributes for the sphere. So now I'm gonna go back here. Alright. The one thing I need to mention is the pivot. First thing is to move you need to move your pivot from the middle to the south pole. So that's why when you do the scale, it just scales uh, the way it should, you know, instead from the center upwards, it's from, from the south pole upwards. So, so let's start. So first thing is gonna be my translate Y. So if I do click here, create an expression, it will bring me to my expression editor. So all I need to do is copy that attribute, paste it here, and right, then we'll say equals, and I'm going to insert a mathematical function named sign, which is here. Uh, so the sign function, it needs a time a time node operator or a frame node. So I'm just going to do the time, which at the moment is set to 24 seconds uh, per second. So 24 frames per second, sorry. And if I hit, you know, if I do close brackets, I mean, I need I need this always to finish up my expression and hit create. You'll see. If I hit um, wine, hit play, you see it's actually doing that. But what is the sign operation doing? It's just basically going from uh, 0 to 1 and 0 to minus 1. So it's, it's doing kind of a wave effect. So that's what the sign is always going to do. It's going 0 to 1 and 0 to minus 1. So that's what it's, that's what it's doing. So what I need to do now. What I want is this to go a little bit faster. So all I have to do is just multiply the time by a number. In this case, I'm going to use the 9.81, which is gravity, right? So gravity is calculated Maya as um, uh, basically it's going to be centimeters per square um, uh, second, sorry, centimeters um, per second square. So that's how it is. So if I hit rewind and play, this is going a little bit faster now, it's a little bit more natural. Okay. And one last thing, I want this sphere to actually, you know, move up. I mean, I don't want this to be, stay at, you know, go from one to minus one, but instead I want this to go from zero to two. So I'm just gonna say plus one. So it moves one unit up. So if I hit edit, um, to see that's what it's doing, just one, one unit up, pretty much. So it's gonna go from zero, uh, from zero to, uh, oh sorry, yeah, exactly, from one to two, and from one to zero. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so now let's say I want this to move a little bit, you know, um, far uh, in in the wide direction, a bit further up. All I need to do is just then, before I add this number, I need to add a multiplication. So I need to multiply by a number. Say, say I wanted to go. Um, 10 units uh, up then or five units up i have to do half number half of the the number so it's not going to be 10 in this case it's going to be or five or if i want to go 10 units up or 2.5 if i want this to go five units up so i'm going to do just 2.5 units so if you're wondering why it's half um i'll explain this to you and obviously if i do 2.5 then i have to offset it by 2.5 as well here right so we stay again in the above the plane or above the grid. So I'm just gonna explain why this. Uh, basically, all these numbers here are part of a vector equation. So a unit is represented as a vector. So you can see I have it here. So basically a unit is 
just pretty much one, 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 but it's a vector number. So if I run this in the, uh, in the script editor, you see the result is 0 0.57735. So it's obviously, because I'm using, a, I, I rounded up the number to 2.5, it's not gonna really go up to five, so it's not gonna be a perfect number, you know, but but it'll, it'll be it'll be good enough. So I don't really have to be a perfect five or perfect, you know, that doesn't really matter. So next thing we're going to do then, it's basically, you should, by the way, you should always name your expressions. So this one's just gonna call it bouncing ball uh, JP, which is my name. Uh, and then I'm gonna keep keep going. So next time, next thing I'm going to do now is gonna do my squash and stretch effect, which is this, uh, and for that I'm gonna be using my scale Y. So all I need to do is again type P e, steer one dot scale y and then I say equals and I'm going to do the exact same operation sign that's going to be time time 581 do brackets close that expression hit edit and you see if I hit uh, rewind I get pretty much the same thing I had before so I'm going from again 0 to 1 and 0 to minus 1 which is not what we want so first thing is Okay, I have to I have to tell my okay my initial scale is going to be one, so it's going to say one plus sine time la 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 la. So if I hit edit now, hit rewind, and play, you see now that's pretty much what I want. That's a lot more what I was looking for. Um, so what if I don't really want this question stretch that much? Well, obviously, if you think mathematical, all you need to do is just divide this by a number. So that's going to go, say, for example, 5. And I got maybe not half, but, you know, uh, half of what I had, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. But there you go. That's that's looking a little bit nicer. Obviously, if you, don't, if you want this to be really exaggerated, yeah, just, you know, have a little number. Just like that. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so next thing. Now that I have this, is obviously I want this to have um, to have a direction, right? So uh, I don't want this to bounce in the same place all the time. So it could be. I mean, that would work. But I also want this to have a a to trust go from say point A to point B. So next thing I have to do is all we do is take the translate. And this time, I'm going to copy this one uh, and paste it here. So I'm going to say translate x because I wanted to move in this particular direction, translate x. So all I need to do is again, it's equals, and I'm going to tell my what's my initial uh, position. So in this case, I want this to go further back. So it's going to be minus 20, for example. And I'm going to say again plus, um, and this, oop, and this time I'm going to say time times the. 10, yeah, maybe 20s because I want this to go a little bit fast. Uh, hit edit. So now, if you see, I got my bouncing ball, which is pretty nice, right? And one last thing you want to do, I just, because uh, if you see this from the side, you see it's bouncing, right? But it doesn't have any directionality. I mean, it's bouncing like it's, uh, you know, regular bounds but you know actually you need have you need to have a little bit of direction like that you know to make it feel a little bit more natural so so see by the way if you just lose your expression like this all you need to do is come here select by expression name you see i have my bouncing ball jp there so that's why you have to name them all the time this is really good practice so last thing then is going to be take my my rotation and this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky, but not still very simple. So it's gonna be sphere one dot, and that one's gonna be rotate. Make sure you don't make any typos, because otherwise it won't work. Rotate set, it's equals. And in this case, I want my initial rotation to be set to minus 15. Take, give or take, so minus 15 will be something like this, right? Or maybe I want this to start maybe here or maybe there. So I can say, okay, minus, maybe not minus, but okay, my initial rotation is going to be maybe 10, right? Then for this, in this case, I want to multiply this one for 
by time by sign again so same thing sign and then your time uh, times 20 so it goes as fast as my as my translations right and then if I hit uh, do create you see what's gonna happen it's doing that thing right but so it's actually not really going that much in that direction what I want in the, in the first place so I need to do all I need to do in this case is say plus right and since it was going in the minus direction we could say my uh, plus minus 15 uh, that means it's going to go in that in this direction instead of that direction so you can see when I hit click when I hit edit that's what I get that's pretty much what I get so now if I hit rewind and play you see whoop 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 you got a, a lot more nicer animation there so yeah so uh, that's pretty much it um i really hope you guys uh, enjoy this uh mini tutorial tips and tricks from maya and please if you like what you saw just like my like this video subscribe to my channel and if you want to follow me on twitter just um i'm out of this out of this world just follow me for the latest news and latest um, videos for Maya, um, M &E, everything M&E for Autodesk. So it'll be Maya, 3D Studio Max, Stingray, so on and so forth. So, well, thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.